Estudar física para o esporte é importante porque eu consigo fazer a minha, usar a minha força de uma maneira inteligente. The physics of jiu-jitsu is not well known to the common population. Jiu-jitsu is an ancient Japanese martial art form. It is often associated with aggression and confrontation. However, jitsu means technique and ju means flexible in Japanese. So jujitsu is about flexible technique and the idea of it is to channel your opponent's energy rather than trying to meet it head on. As mixed martial arts has risen to be one of the biggest powerhouse sports in the world, so is the keen interest in the martial arts world of Brazilian jujitsu. What makes Brazilian jujitsu different to the original art form is that it's not all about force. It's about physics and momentum rather than a strike. An important thing to know is the impulsive momentum relationship. You see, this alters the energy experienced by a body beneath the activity. And this constraint is broken even with the motivation of the resultant force. So if you have more mass, which is weight, you'll be able to move that mass rapidly, which is the force motivation on your target. As três alavancas de física, elas se diferem entre onde estão o fulcro, a força potente e a força resistente. To get a better understanding of this, you must first understand the basics of the joints and levers in the human body. É, na primeira alavanca, eu tenho o fulcro no meio, a força potente em uma das extremidades e a força resistente na outra extremidade. So a hand pushing an object, seesaws, scissors, or a wheel axle are all examples of first-class levers. First-class levers place the fulcrum in the middle, like a seesaw. The joint between the vertebrae and the spine is an example of a first-class lever. In this case, the spine is the fulcrum with the muscles that lift the head. During a hold, the person is probably using a class one lever. So we have the fulcrum, the pivot point in the middle, and pushing a force like a seesaw. The arm bar is an example of a class one lever. With the arm bar, there are two levers being used. Your arm is the class one bar, with his arm being the fulcrum. The load of your mass is your body weight, which acts as the lever to distribution. Total domínio, né? Para a gente subjugar o nosso oponente, a gente vai fazer a pegada cruzada. Tem que colocar o oponente na lateral também para você ter ângulo para passar a perna e esticar o braço. Feito isso, se o, se o oponente não fizer a defesa inicial, perder o braço. This is a type of lever which has the fulcrum in between the weight and the force. This is represented as the force fulcrum weight. This is the most basic type of lever. A segunda alavanca, ela tem o fulcro em uma extremidade, a força potente no meio e a força resistente na outra extremidade. Swinging a baseball bat, sweeping a broom, or using a bow and arrow are all examples of second class levers. Your opponent's body acts as a class one lever, usually of the arms or legs and of the joints. Your body is a class two lever. You see, as you start to lift your body, the load is pushed into the middle, and the effort is at the end. Your foot is an example of a second class lever. E a terceira alavanca, ela tem o fulcro na, em uma extremidade, a força resistente no meio, e a força potente na outra extremidade. A bottle opener, door hinge, and stapler are all examples of third class levers. The spider guard triangle is an example of a class three lever. The third class lever has the load at the end and the effort in the middle. All jujitsu sweeps are examples of third class levers. The fulcrum is your foot or knee on the ground, while your load is your opponent's weight and the effort is the twist and motion in the middle. Como eu consigo esse torque maior? Eu preciso fazer uma força distante do centro de massa e aí eu tenho uma maior eficiência na minha derrubada. The hip throw is an example of momentum in jiu-jitsu. You see, your opponent's center of mass is the geometric center. And with the mass distribution, it can be regarded at the point where the gravitational force acts on the entire body. To make your opponent unstable, you have to move his or her center of mass. Human beings' center of mass rests between their legs, your hips. So if you want to unbalance your opponent, you have to use your hips as well. The first law of motion is very important if you want to successfully throw your opponent in a match. For example, suppose your opponent is moving to the left or right 
you must move contrary to your opponent. In this case, your movements are temporarily off balance. You can take advantage of this motion by using Newton's first law. Newton's first law is often stated as an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion. Timing and smooth execution are essentials in this sport, but understanding of physics, particularly the torques and the center of mass is also necessary. In Jiu Jitsu, your main objective is to overcome your opponent's stability. With fundamentals of physics and knowing the levers of the body, you learn to always fight with intelligence.